Hey, <laughs> good morning, everyone. Um, I am uh, really happy that you're joining us today, and um, I really want to let's get into the lesson. We got a wonderful lesson today, as always. I mean, is there such a thing as a not wonderful Bible lesson? I mean, think about it seriously. Okay, so today's lesson, and if you got your quarterly, we're starting a new uh, new section, and so this will be session one of the new section right here. And um, and if you don't have your quarterly, that's fine. You can have take your Bible and follow along. Um, the passage today is coming from Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20, and 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 through 21. That is Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 16 through 21. And the point of today's lesson is, God sends us to tell others about Jesus. That's what the commission is all about. So that's what we're going to be talking about there. We're going to be talking about the Great Commission uh, and the Matthew part of it, and then we're going to transition over to what Paul had to say about reconciliation with God the Father. And, uh, and so when we look at the connection of the, today's lesson, we look at the, like the Great Commission right here. You know, um, back in um, the 1490s, uh, Leonardo da Vinci uh, was uh, commissioned to uh, paint a, a mural uh, on, in a monastery. A, uh, well, it was actually uh, a more of a monastery uh, in, in, uh, in, in a convent in uh, Milan, uh, uh, Italy. And, it's, and, and so, uh, well, and this turned out to be one of the greatest pieces of art that's known you know, to mankind. But uh, how did he go about doing this? Well, what happened was they wanted this uh, this mural painted in the convent, and so what did they do? They commissioned him to do the painting, and so they so his commission was to do the painting of the Last Supper. And if you think about it, as far as commissions are concerned, that was that was a great commission right there, wasn't it? But that commission to do that was nothing in comparison to all the art on the face of this earth would not even scratch the surface of being compared to the commission that we have been tasked with from Jesus Christ himself. And so Matthew 18, uh, verse 18, uh, starts off with, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth, and go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. And with that, uh, what he was doing, what we got to remember, how did this all take place prior to this? Well, Matthew records this, and 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 had, well, he recorded this is the end of the last chapter of the book of Matthew itself, uh, going from the time uh, that Jesus arose from the grave, his resurrection, uh, that people seeing him going places and doing things. So what he done, he told his disciples, I will see you again, and I want you to go and meet me. Basically, he, he said uh, in, uh, in, in verse, he said in verse 28, uh, in chapter 28, verse 10, he said, uh, he says, you know, go to Galilee and meet me. That's why he told the 11 disciples and to go to the mountain in Galilee. Now, the mountain in Galilee, uh, a lot of people tell you they know exactly which one it was, and there's like a lot of things. Uh, Nobody really knows which one it was, but it was a place that they were familiar with because he said the mountain. And so I'm not going to get into that part of it. I mean, that that's that's where he went. But what I would like to just drill down on just for a second right here, just for context purposes, in order to get your attention and realize how serious everything they'd done back then was. Um, Jerusalem to Galilee, that's where he was, right? He was in Jerusalem, all right? So Jerusalem to Galilee is about 80 miles. Now, if somebody told you that they wanted to have a meeting with you and they said they wanted you to go to, I don't know, let's say Jacksonville, okay, and to have that meeting and we're here in Ash, uh, you probably would go, and we're talking driving the Jacksonville, right? I just, I just popped that out of the top of my head. Some, that's right around, that's from here, it's right about 80 miles. And, uh, and you would go, Really? <laughs> do I really got to drive that far? I mean, do we have to do that? But he, now you, you got to think of the mode of transportation these guys had. So it took them a while to get there, but they did what he asked them to do. And so when Jesus spoke to them, they believed in him. First of all, they believed in him. And, and, and he spoke to them saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. All power is given unto him. 
Who gave him all this power? Well, obviously, and we all know, it was God the Father. And so just think about what he was saying here. All power, okay? All power is given to him. Well, first of all, it sends a big message to the devil, doesn't it? That all power is given to him. <laughs> Nothing's given to the devil, okay? What he's got, he's no better off than anybody else. He's just a fallen angel. It's what a created being is what he is. But we, when we look at what he is telling the disciples, make no doubt when you're talking to me and the things that you have seen me done, do be, uh, before my crucifixion and the things that you've seen me do since I was resurrected, lets you know that God the Father has given me all power in heaven and earth. So everything from the Father belongs to the Son. And it says, and it tells them to, and this is the commission, he's tell, what he's telling them to do. He's telling them to go there, the, therefore and teach all nations, all nations. So what, what is he really telling them? This is where we see Jesus telling the disciples, you are to touch everyone. Who are all nations? Well, it's not just the Jews anymore, is it? It's the Jews and the Gentiles. This is where Jesus is, uh, is, is telling us all and telling them all that we all are his children and we all are to be ministered to. It says all nations, so that, that is everyone there is. And also when you say in all nations, that means that they are to get away from the area that they're in. All nations would be the whole world, wouldn't it? And today, what we call all nations, what we call taking the message to the whole world, well, we call it missionaries. And, that, and that, that's what they are, carrying everything to the whole wide world. And so we are to, in our, in our church, in our community, in our state, in our country, and throughout the whole world, we are to carry the word and teach, teach, teach everyone baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Ghost. Now, do you do notice, and we were, when, I, when I started reading that or reciting that right then, how many of you were actually mumbling it with your lips and, or saying it inside your head when I, when I said all of these verses right here because they're ingrained in you, aren't they? Keep that in mind, the fact how many things that you may not even try to study to learn that you know you know these verses right here by heart, particularly if you're a seasoned Christian and it's, it's been with you since your childhood. You, you know, like me, it's just it's just part of your being is what it is. And that's what it should be as part of your being. It's, nothing about the Bible should be foreign to us. Nothing about the Bible not, or the things that we might not understand. Absolutely. We will go to our graves not understanding the majority of the Bible. But the Bible itself should not be foreign to us because it should be the comfort to us is what it is intended to do. So in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Now, when we look here, he did not say in the names of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. He said in the name. So what did he mean by the name? Well, he's speaking of the Godhead. This is where the Trinity comes in. Okay, so this is a good example of it right here. Don't have time to go into the Trinity, but what it does, it's showing the Trinity, it's showing the Godhead, but it's also, also showing the individuality of each individual, of God, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and what each one of them do in our life and in, and, and in our hearts and everything that we do. There again, as, as Brother John Evans said a couple Sundays ago in the lesson about, about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, how underappreciated and overlooked the Holy Ghost is, and but it's not. They are equal parts of the Trinity. We could talk Trinity some other time. If it's a lesson, we can get more in detail on it. But once again, the word teaching is coming back, and it says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, always, until the end of the world. Now, teaching. Let's talk about teaching very quickly here. When we look at the teaching part of it, I have said this so many times and I will continue to say it as long as I can draw breath. You, you, you can't, you can't, you, a disciple. You know, those were, he was talking to those 11, 11 original disciples. But who are we? We are his disciples 2,000 years later is what we are. He taught them 
what they needed to know and what they could do. Plus, when the Spirit came to them on Pentecost, they were filled with that Spirit and they were able to do a lot of things, a lot of things that Jesus himself could do because of the Spirit being in them to do that. But what we got to look at is teaching itself. When we look at teaching, you, all right, you, you, you've got to learn the Bible. You've got to know what the Bible says. You've got to study this. You are commissioned to go out and teach the world the Bible. Can you teach the world the Bible if you don't know it? No, you can't. Well, you say, well, right there, I just found my excuse, Don, that I don't have to go out and do it. I uh, know you haven't. There is no excuse to not learn the Bible. And what you have to learn is, and is you have to know the things, the things that are required to become a follower of Christ. How to turn over the old life into the new life of the individual just like you did yourself and your personal experience is such a big part of that. So we have to remember that what they, what the commission is is for us to go out and teach. But in order for us to teach, we've got to learn, we've got to know, we've got to know what we're talking about because the worst thing we could possibly do, slow down, Don. Uh, the, first, the, wor the worst thing we can possibly do is to go out and teach somebody something that is wrong. Okay? Just uh, remember, with, with this, th this is gra the, the greatest responsibility we have in this world is going out and carrying the word of Jesus Christ. Please remember that. It's not just some off the cuff, well, you do if you do, if you don't, if you don't. There is no greater thing than to save, to, to save, to put in a position to be saved. Only, only God saves. But to, to be able to know that you initiated that salvation for an individual, a brother or sister that was going to hell, and you did that, that you got them on the right road and pointed them in the right direction for them to receive Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. What is more satisfying and gratifying than that? What is the thing that you could do on the face of the earth that would ever be better than that? Nothing. Nothing at all. So the Great Commission is for every Christian, every born-again Christian. It is our responsibility, and it should be a loving responsibility that we fully embrace to do. Now, I'm going to shift gears very quickly here and move right over to what Paul said in 2 Corinthians about reconciliation with God. We're starting with verse 16. If you remember, I hope you found it. It says, uh, Wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God that, uh, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and have given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. So what are we, we're talking about reconciliation. Paul starts off verse 16. Therefore, henceforth, Henceforth is what? From the point of your conversion, point of your conversion, you are not the same person that you were before. You are out of this flesh and you are into the new flesh. You are the born again person. You're taking off the old man and putting on the new man. How many times have you heard and read that? It's good stuff. That's why. It says, but we know no man after the flesh, for we have known Christ after the flesh. So we're beyond the flesh. Yes, this body's going to die. This body's going to fail us uh, in many, many ways. But yet we've got to think forward to the resurrected body. We've got to think forward to the new flesh and the new body in Jesus Christ forever and forever. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. That's us. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Well, you think about that. Uh, you, you, you think about all the old things and, and, and that have already went away in your life as a Christian. Maybe you're a new person in the faith. And, that, and you can and you're fresh in your mind uh, the things that you may have been doing weeks or months or a year or two ago. And you say to yourself, and you look in the mirror at yourself, and you say, 
that was me. I can't believe that was me. Uh, maybe it's like me. I look back and I look back in years gone by and the things I'm, I'm, I'm doing wrong and being wrong and, and, and being a really, really, really horrible person. And I, and I just look at it in pure amazement and I think that I, not that I ain't got a long way to go right now. I fall so short every day of my life, but I know, I know that I am, I am forgiven by the blood of Jesus Christ and that everything that I do wrong will be forgiven. And I, when I, and I, I try hard every day of my life to do better and be a better person. But those horrible things, forgive and forget is what Jesus does for us. And, and that is a hard thing. You know, I, I thank him for his forgiveness and I know he has forgotten, but I'm human and I am fallen and I haven't forgotten them all. And you know something? There's a lot of things in my past I don't want to forget because I don't want to do them again. I want them. I don't want them to impede my Christian walk, but I want them to strengthen my Christian walk by being able to remember this is what you don't do. This is what you don't do because how miserable were you when you were doing these things? Think about it. That's what salvation is. You come from misery to jubilation and joy. That's what it's all about. And it says that and all things are of God who have reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and have given to us the ministry of reconciliation. What we've got to look at is that ministry of reconciliation. Okay. The, If you're a Christian right now, God is your friend. If you're not a Christian right now, God is your enemy. Or you are God's enemy, either way you want to put it. So when you think about it, who, if you had to pick out the worst enemies that are to you in this world, well, we can just look at ourselves right now, right? What is our biggest enemy? You know, like, like in our, what's in our country? What's our biggest enemy? Uh, is it... Is our biggest enemy the threat of Russia? Even though they do have Christianity in Russia, but still they're 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 communist, right? So is there the, our biggest threat? North Korea. North Korea states that they are uh, uh, an atheist country. It's what they are. Oh wow! Uh, is it Iran? Is it Iran? And and the Muslims? The Muslims are they the biggest threat that we have? Are they our biggest enemies right now? Uh, is it these? People that are in the White House running our government right now? I mean, they're not God-fearing, obviously, or they wouldn't be doing anti-God things. And so is it them? What is our biggest threat right now? Well, the devil, of course, is our biggest threat. He's definitely our enemy as a Christian. But if you're not a Christian, God is the enemy of you, and you are the enemy of God. It's one way or the other. And why do I say it this way? It's simple, because plain and simple— you're either for him or you are against him. If you are against him, you're going to hell. If you, you will go to hell when you die. You're not getting out easy. But if you're with him and for him, you will be with him forever, ever and ever. We cannot comprehend the beauty of that. So there's the difference. There's the difference. You're either for him or against him. You have to be for him. To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing, not, not, not counting their trespasses, okay, against them, and hath committed unto the world of reconciliation. Jesus came to save the world from sin. He was perfect. He was perfect. But yet he gave up everything for us. And in verse 20 and 21 says, Now they, now then... We are ambassadors for Christ as though God disbeseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, him, Jesus Christ, sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made righteousness of God in him. Just, we are ambassadors for Christ. Keep that in mind. Yeah, you know, this whole thing about you know, people saying, well, you know, if, if that's what a, a Christian is uh, going to be like, I don't want to be one because I saw him at uh, somewhere, somewhere, whatever day. Uh, 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 very quickly here, I, got, I know i got to get going, but it's just like, you know, I can't help this. It just came to my mind. Uh, Joyce Ann and I were going through uh, Shalot today, 
and uh, we were coming from the uh, the north end, headed south. Uh, and I looked, and they were tearing down the old liquor store in Schlup. And I said, wow, I wonder what they're going to put there. And Joyce Ann said, well, maybe they're going to put a parking lot there. And 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 because you look, if you look in front of the new liquor store, there's really no parking there. And I said, that makes perfect sense because the parking lot, uh, you know, it, if they, they would either put it over to the side, walk across the street, or maybe they got a big parking lot on the back side. I hadn't looked over there, but I don't think there's room for it. I said, like that, it, it, it you know, it could be Baptist compliant, right? You can come in and nobody can see you walk in the front door. How slick is that? So, I mean, so that's what we have got to look at. I just had to think about that. Um, but that's what we've got to look at. We have to be compliant with Christ. We have to do what Christ wants us to do. And, you know, sometimes we need to do things that we don't want to do. But then when we find out when we do them, we realize that we were steered in the right direction, don't we? It's like prayer, isn't it? Isn't it like prayer? Yes, no, not now. <laughs> and how many times do, do we find we get mad about the no's and then we find out the no probably saved our life or, or, or saved our soul or the not yet that we had the patience that we waited it out and realized that that was not a good idea. Don, you had a really bad idea and I told you to hold off on that and you listen to me and here's your results. I've also had times when when the father and and, and, the, and Jesus says said that, Don, I said not yet, but you had to push and do it your way, didn't you? How did that work out for you? You know, that's what it's all about. We've got to trust and obey for there is no other way but to be happy in Jesus. We have to trust the one, the perfect one, the perfect one that took our sins, took our sins on him. Right, I mean, up to that last moment on that cross where he was yelling out to the Father, he was yelling out to the Father in pain and anguish, and heaven he was yelling to him, saying that he was there for us and yet still forgiven that guy that was beside him right there to the very last moment. So you think it's too late for you? It's never too late until you draw that last breath. When you draw that last breath, you've done it. It's over with then. All the praying, all the preachers, all, all the saints, every uh, every pope, everybody in the world, it doesn't matter who, who it is. They're not going to pray you into heaven then. Okay? It's not going to happen. I've had people say, well, so-and-so died, and I sure wish you would pray for them. It's like, can't do that. That's just a waste of time, but I'll pray for you. <laughs> and because that's what it's got you got to do. So be happy in Jesus. Carry his word. He he went through all of this to reconcile. God gave up his son, the begotten son, to reconcile us with him. He did ever since Adam and Eve, it's been that way. Did he have to do that? No, he didn't have to do that. This is God's plan. He doesn't have to do it the way he's doing it. He can do it any way he wants to. He created us. He made us. So we have a choice. It's like we can rebel we can rebel and go to hell. Or we can accept him as the perfect creator and be with him forever. It's that simple. It really is that simple. Father, we thank you for the Great Commission. We thank you for sending your son to us to be able to set the groundwork for us 2,000 years ago in order for us to still have his word today to be able to go back into and to and to and to study and to pray upon and to be able to sit in a a a setting in church with uh with our with our pastors and listen to them uh, uh, dig into your word and and just give us all the we have so many resources today that these people back then did not have that we do and it's only because you have given them to us and so we are to carry your word, use the resources you have given us, Father. I just pray a special blessing upon everyone that's out of my voice, everyone at Soldier Bay, everyone, everyone that believes in the name and the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. And it is in his name I so humbly pray. Amen.